Hello and welcome to the fourth installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to demonstrate how to insert some of our own custom tiles into the game. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I replace existing tiles with new ones? How do I insert new tiles without replacing old ones? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be constructing a very simple map in which we insert and utilize some custom tiles using the skills we've acquired from this tutorial. We'll be going through the first part of this tutorial in Fire Red, but be aware that the mechanics of what's going on are the same across all Gen 3 games. This first demonstration will be aimed at replacing the vanilla tree with a custom tree. In order to do this, you'll either need to download a tile sheet off of the internet or create your own. The former is much more practical for us at this point, so I suggest Google searching for a nice looking tree. I'll be using the tree design shown on screen for its simplicity. Let's begin by opening the block editor. Remember last tutorial when I talked about there only being 13 palettes to work with, each being attributable to particular themes? We're going to have to consider this topic when replacing the tree. When we insert our custom tree, we'll only be able to use a single palette for its colors. This means we only get to utilize 15 colors since the first color in every palette is reserved for transparency. When choosing the palette you want to use, you should consider every color that your custom tree has, including the trunk color, the leaf color, and the shadow color of the tree. If you are missing some important colors, you might want to consider adjusting your palette in order to accommodate for this. While it's true that the tree I want to use has more shades of green and brown than I have in my palette, I'm not going to add these shades since it shouldn't make the tree look too bland. I think we can comfortably make use of what we have available to us already for this example. We now need to extract tileset 0 from the game, that is, the tileset that contains the original tree. In order to do this, we first need to make sure we have the correct palette loaded. From there, we click Picture, Save Tileset 1. If you recall, the header tab tells us which two tilesets we have loaded. The tileset under Tileset 1 is the first one in our list, and the tileset under Tileset 2 is the second one in our list. Since our tree exists within the first tileset in our list, we're extracting the first tileset and not the second one. The second one contains all of the Palette Town specific tiles, which we don't care about right now. Simple enough. The tileset should now be saved somewhere on your computer. Go ahead and open it up in an image editing program. I'll be using Paint for this demonstration. I suggest you zoom in on the image in order to make it easier to edit. You might have noticed that the tiles here seem to be separated in 8x8 squares of pixels. It's very important that we keep our tiles organized within this 8x8 grid. When using the block editor, we can only select 8x8 tiles to build our blocks with, so making sure that our pixels stay in their respective squares is important. I've highlighted the half tree we need to replace. We'll start by expanding our canvas a bit to the right. Next, copy and paste half of the custom tree you wish to insert. If your tree is not symmetrical, I suggest finding a symmetrical one to follow along with this example. Inserting an asymmetric tree will require you to insert the whole thing as opposed to just half of it, since you can't effectively use the X and Y flip checkboxes to craft the second half of the tree. Before we paste our new tree over the old one, we need to recolor it completely to match with our palette. If there are any colors on our new tree that don't exist within our palette, those pixels will look miscolored when we insert them into the game, which is undesirable. As I recolor the custom tree in the background, I want to discuss transparency. You may have noticed that this custom tree has its whole background as grass while the original tree only has the bottom with grass. This is done so that when we're building our blocks in the block editor, we can use the tree's transparency to place other tiles behind it. In other words, we can put these tiles in the up section and the other tiles in the down section. If we keep the grass behind the entire tree, then we wouldn't be able to combine the tree tiles with any other tiles. That means whenever we build a tree on our map, it would have to stand completely alone with absolutely no overlap. I'll show on screen what that would look like. Obviously, this would look very bad. When it comes to trees, it's best to keep the grass with the trunk section and the transparency color with the rest of the tree, since it wouldn't be realistic to have other tiles underneath the trunk of the tree. That wouldn't make much sense visually. But how do we know the exact number of pixels to use with grass and with transparency? If you recall, each tile is 8x8 in size. When we craft a block with our tiles in the block editor, we use 4 tiles per block, with the finished product being 16x16 16 16 in size. 
Therefore, we should conclude that the trunk of the tree is going to end up being 16 by 16 pixels. So we need exactly that amount of grass in our custom tree. All of the tiles above the 16 pixel mark should have a transparent background. If this is a little bit confusing right now, it should make more sense once we see how things look in advanced map. Our tree has been colored to match our palette. Now all we have to do is paste it over the top of the old tree and hit save. Don't forget to return the canvas size back to how it was before we expanded it for extra workspace. Revisiting advanced map, open the block editor and click picture, load tile set 1, since we saved from there to begin with. If you look in the tiles section, you'll see that the old tree has been replaced with our custom tree. If you see any strange colors on your tree, it's almost definitely because those pixels are of a color that don't exist within your palette. You can use this indication to go back and recolor those spots that are messed up. Then reload the image into the ROM like we just did. If we click on the picture menu item in the block editor, then click load new blocks, all of our blocks that utilize the old trees will be updated to utilize the new tree tiles. There's obviously an issue here though. The old trees didn't completely change. This is because some of the trees in our block section used the other tree tiles that we didn't change. Therefore, we'll have to go through each and every block that utilizes the tree tiles and edit it ourselves using the down up section. It'll be tedious, but worth it in the end. Hopefully you're starting to see why we chose to include only 16 pixels of grass for our tree trunk more clearly. Since the tile list is engraved in an 8x8 grid, Using 16 pixels in height and 16 pixels in width starting at the trunk of the tree makes it so that the grass doesn't run onto the middle section of the tree and get in the way of where the transparency color is supposed to be. It's a simple concept really, and if you still don't 100% see what I mean, you will as we get more practice with this sort of thing. I've finished editing all of the tree blocks that we're going to need to use for creating our maps. Thus, we've finished our first objective of replacing an existing graphic. On to inserting brand new tiles without overwriting old ones. For this demonstration, we'll be inserting a lamp post into the game, but this time we'll be using Emerald version for the sake of variety. When we insert custom tiles without replacing old ones, we'll have to find some space in our tile sets that consist of only the transparency color. These spaces are not being used for anything in particular, so we can place custom tiles on them. Referring back to the main tile set, it's pretty obvious that this tile set doesn't have much more room for inserting new tiles. I mean, it certainly does have some room, but if you're wanting to insert big things like houses, you're going to need a lot more space. So now what do we do? Are we stuck? Not necessarily. Remember that each and every map consists of two different tile sets, as displayed in the header tab. We've only been messing with the first one so far, but what about the second one? The second tile set is almost always poor in the amount of graphics it contains, such as Little Root Town's tile set. Surely there must be lots of space available for us to insert our own tiles. Let's make sure we have the desired palette selected, then click the picture menu item and click save tile set 2 instead of save tile set 1. This will save the little root town specific tile set instead of the big nature tile set from before. If we open the image up, we can see that there is indeed a huge space available for us to insert our own tiles. The process is similar to how it was when we were replacing the tree tiles, only this time we're not overwriting anything which feels great. All we have to do is remember to keep our tiles in line with the 8x8 grid and change their colors to match those of the current palette. Since the palette we're using doesn't contain any of the grass colors, we won't be able to use the grass for the background of the bottom of the lamppost. We'll just use the transparency color instead. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does have its drawbacks, which we shouldn't worry about at this point. Besides, if we want grass to be shown underneath the lamppost in the game, we can just put the lamppost in the up section and the grass tiles in the down section. The lamppost is finished. Remember to drag your canvas back to its original size if you expanded it, then save the image. Back in the block editor, click load tile set 2 in the picture menu item. You'll see the lamppost appear in the block editor's tile section at the bottom of the list. You should now be able to use these tiles to build your blocks. Let's do just that. If you recall from the last tutorial, the player will end up appearing below or behind the tiles in the up section, which in this case is not what we want, as shown on screen. I mean, it is what we want for the top part of the lamppost, but not for the base of it. Therefore, we must change the base block's background byte to block is covered by hero, so our player appears over the top of it when we walk in front of it. The top part of the lamppost will work as intended, with the player appearing behind it, since we didn't change that block's background byte. 
That's everything I plan to discuss in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned throughout this tutorial, we'll construct a very simple map using some newly inserted tiles. Inserting and replacing tiles can take a very long time, especially if you plan to change absolutely everything in your ROM hack. It's not impossible, but it certainly takes some dedication. This tutorial has taught you the basics of what you need to know in order to do just that. During this application demonstration, I want to forewarn you about certain tiles. You may be trying to replace tiles that have an animation assigned to them, like flowers blowing in the wind or ocean water traveling in waves. If you replace these tiles in the tile set, you'll notice that absolutely nothing changed when you look at the results in game. Things may look differently in advanced map, but not when you're actually playing the game. This is because these tiles are tied to an animation, meaning every frame of their animation is loaded from an entirely different image. In other words, there are tiles that these kind of graphics use that are not shown to us in the tile sets we extract from advanced map. They're kept hidden elsewhere. If you're not familiar with editing animations, I strongly suggest you stray from attempting to change these graphics since it will probably all end in vain. We'll go over how to properly edit and add animations in a future tutorial. We're about at the end of creating this map. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to either ask over at Pokey Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the fifth installment of this series.